Okay, I'm beginning to work on my water. One point I want to make as I work here is that you want to keep the blues in the same family. Um, for example, I have used cobalt and a little bit of burnt sienna in this portion, which is going to be underground. You're not really going to see very much of this, but it will be underground. I mean, you know, the foreground, so you will need to kind of keep that in mind for harmony's sake. And the same is true for the sky. I used predominantly cobalt blue with a touch of alizarin crimson and or a touch of the burnt sienna, depending on what I need to, uh, how I need to emphasize either of those colors. I'm using a small soft bristle brush, um, and it's a synthetic brush, which I actually like, and I have, as you know, I've replaced the tape, so this is going to be my horizon line, and I'm, I'm going fairly light blue with this, and using a little alizarin crimson and white. Now, from this point down, I'm going to be adding white. And this is a good time to put out some of that liquid, which I just put a little bit on my... Now I'm getting a lot of my blue that's in my brush out and I'm starting with my white in the brush with just a slight touch of the liquid. And again, I, I start from over here. You notice how some of the outer edges of the bristle are dropping little edges of paint. And that's pretty much what I want to happen. And that's one reason I work backwards. So you want to be very deliberate in your application of paint at this point because if you keep blending you're going to blend out all of those nice strokes that you want to keep. See how that picked up the paint from my brush. And of course you can always go back if you want to add some more of that kind of stroke. But if you don't live near the beach, um, take a little mini vacation and go with your camera and take many photographs from different directions. Now from here on out, I'm going to be very very light with my, with my blue. So this is going to be the area where the, the waves have broken. And they've left that foam from the waves. So from a distance you won't be able to see the details of the foam, but you'll know it's there. And that's another thing if you, if you go to the beach for the purpose of taking pictures, 
um, get up close, get, get in the edge of the water and photograph right straight down so you can see what I'm talking about regarding these foams. Now I'm, I'm tending toward uh, patterns here, which I've been cautioning about. So um, make sure you eliminate those as you go along. And just then, I just reached over into my white paint that wasn't mixed and just touched, and that's what I got. Now, it's up to you totally how much of this you want to go on in your waves. Now, I'm going to say that this is um, low tide and the tide going out. That's pretty much what my photograph tells me. Because the waves flat. Now, we don't have extremely boisterous waves on the East Coast like you might in California, for example. But when the tide is coming in, especially if it's windy, you do have a little more activity. Now, I'm going to do some more work on that, but for right now, I'm going to concentrate on bringing this water all the way out to the edge. One thing you will notice is that, especially at low tide, when the water is moving out and not coming all the way back to where it came in as it was making land, it leaves behind the wet sand, which in Georgia we call mud. I'm guessing you call it mud where you live, too. And this is when you're going to go back to the burnt sienna in blue. Now, this part of the mud it's not going to be completely straight like your horizon line would be. But there is a, a line of demarcation. picked up some liquid. I actually have too much, so I may have to wipe that off. 
but that's one of the things you learn by doing. And that's another good reason to have um, these um, background colors already on here. I'm going to leave that to dry for just a moment or two. Continuing on with my white highlights, uh, using a slight amount of liquid, and I'm concentrating for the most part on those areas that are going to be highlights, and I realized uh, in the few minutes I went to my computer uh, that when I came back using the liquid, uh, this white is drying really fast. So um, you might keep that in mind if you're using liquid. Um, if you're not, it's probably not a, an issue with you. Um, but as I was saying earlier, pay attention to your brush strokes. Um, in some paintings and in some artist style, brush stroke is important um, and, and they'd like to see a lot of brush strokes. And in some cases, that's certainly true with me, but since I'm going with a more realistic approach, I want to pay attention to my brush strokes and make sure they're at least what I want them to be and not primarily accidents. Okay, when I come over here, I've got some areas that are going to be um, really light up around the edges of my grass. I'm gonna make sure I get those in and and get them in the shape that I want them to be. And that not only has to do with your the consistency of your paint, but your brush strokes. And I know I'm probably telling you a lot of things you don't want to know or don't think you want to know at this point, but gives me something to do while I'm working with my hands. And if it's helpful to you, then that's a good thing. But I am a teacher and that's what teachers do. Okay, I'm liking the way these brush strokes are looking. And I'm paying attention to my photograph here, and I'm looking at these lightest areas. 
and you may not be able to see them just looking or glancing at this but if you if you look at it more closely in fact learning to look at things closely is one of the major aspects I think of painting and everyone has a a different style. Sometimes that style changes. Um, I'd like to think through my experimentation that I've learned to work in different styles with different media. And if you don't already, you will over time. But if you get something that you like and I might add if you're if you're trying to make a living as a painter you start paying attention to your to your audience and we're very fortunate to have the computer so our audience can be all over the world I have a few subscribers from other countries and I think that's very interesting. And I love it when they comment to tell me what it is they that drew them to my work and and why they decided to subscribe to my channel. I've had a few comments of people who liked who liked my detail instruction and that's always a good thing. But as most of you realize if, if you don't like my chatter you can either mute the video fast forward to the parts you can hear now. At some point later, I'm going to be coming back and highlighting again once I have completed my sea oats. And in some cases, I may be working on the shadows. I'm still using my plain white with just a little liquid. This is a good opportunity for you to experiment with some um, brush strokes and if you end up with something that you like, then go for it. The direction that the sand is drifting can in some ways determine your brush stroke as well. This area on closer inspection seems to be coming downward. 
so I'm going to suggest that in my brush strokes. By coming downward. Concerned that I'm covering up some of my greens so I can find them again. There are ways to do this much faster. Um, but I think for teaching purposes, this is. a good way to do it. Sand um, tends to pile up from having been blown by the wind. You have that, and then you have areas that are highlighted simply because um, the sun is shining brightly on it and indicating its shape. Remember, I removed this earlier, so I'm going to, have to do a little more painting on it. Now, I'm considering up here that um, even though I'm going to have grasses covering up a lot of the sand. The sand is underneath it. And I know there's a lot to remember, especially if you're um, a fairly new painter, but um, whatever marks are left on that canvas are going to show through when you come back to it to paint that grass over it. So make sure it's at least what you want it to be. And this is the reason you have to learn to pay very close attention to what's going on in, um, in nature. So that you not only are, are knowing what to do, but if you know why you're doing it, it makes it easier. I'm not trying to get too philosophical on you here. Some of these things I learned from mistakes I've made in the past. I think, okay, let's don't do that again. And I've been at this for about 
38 years, so you can imagine that. I've learned by a lot of mistakes what not to do. Okay, this sand is coming downhill, so to create that sense of it's coming down, I need to paint the sand coming down. Liking the way that's looking. This kind of work makes the finished product so much easier. It's really better to err on the side of not getting light enough. And if that's you calling me, I'll call you back. I used to do my beach scenes in acrylics, uh, but there was just something about doing them in acrylics that seemed a little bit too much like color, color book painting. Not that there's anything wrong with color book painting, but I just didn't have the, the freedom, and I didn't have the color. Changes that I like. Which you can you can still do those in acrylic, but um, there are acrylics now, the interactive colors that are very um, forgivable, and you can even go back and re-wet them.